Good day, friends. Do you think it's possible to postpone your funeral? Your first response may be to say it is impossible. This lecture concerns your most valuable asset, your health. One of life's greatest blessings is the gift of health. If you possess good health, you are wealthy. Physical health also enables you to enjoy a better spiritual experience. When you visit a cemetery, you'll notice that people die in different ages. Why? Some people argue that this was God's will that some die young and others when they are older. Is this biblical? Is this scientific? No, it's not. Modern science tells us that man is born with a certain amount of vital force, a certain amount of life capital. You can squander your capital in a few years or preserve it carefully and live a little longer. And this is exactly what Deuteronomy 4.40 says. Keep his decrees and commands which I am giving you today, so that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God gives you for all the time. This is a reference to both the moral and the health laws. The same thought is repeated in 1 Kings chapter 3.14 And if you walk in my ways and obey my statutes and my commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. And Solomon says in Proverbs 10.27 The fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. Normally, the kind of lifestyle I adopt determines the quality and length of my life. Can we expect the designer of our marvellous bodies to tell us how to take care of ourselves? Oh yes, and today we are going to consult his manual for healthful living. Another name for this manual is called the Bible. Romans 12 verse 1 Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. Lifestyle has more to do with religion than we will ever realize. The devil will do anything in his power to poison our food and get us to adopt an unhealthy lifestyle and die. When you study the miracles of Christ, you'll notice that he always healed the whole man, physically and spiritually. Whenever he healed a sick person physically, he would say, Go and sin no more, or... Your sins are forgiven. Matthew 14 verse 14 When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. These sick also included mentally sick people. One of the most beautiful verses in scripture concerning total healing is found in Psalms 103 verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. What is this verse telling us? It emphasizes the fact that both physical and mental health are very important if we want to enjoy total health. God wants us to adopt a holistic approach to life. John 1 verse 29 The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is a health-giving message. Please accept this free offer to be cleansed from sin. We need a daily dose of heavenly vitamins. Another verse that brings healing comes from Isaiah 43 verse 1. But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel. A sense of belonging is also health-promoting. Let's ask Paul to tell us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 what else is expected from us to be healthy. He says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. What a tremendous thought. But why should I be so careful in caring for my body? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20 You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. God regards you and me as very precious and he paid a tremendous price to redeem us. 
And because we are so valuable in his eyes, we should develop a self-control in every facet of life. Don't let your depraved appetite rule your life. God has made provision for you to rule your appetite. Let's take a long road back to Eden and discover God's original diet for man. Genesis 1.29 tells us that it was a vegetarian diet. Let's read it. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. Just look at this beautiful harvest scene from Upper Galilee. God wants us to eat whole grain. But what do we do? We take everything that's good out of the grain and feed it to the cows and we eat the little starch that's left. Let's go down to Jerusalem and see how the bakers demineralize and devitaminize good whole wheat grain. Just look at these pale anemic loaves of white bread. My fat friend says he prefers eating white bread and he proves it. His wife on the other hand prefers eating whole wheat bread and you can see the difference. Fruits, grains and nuts. These were God's original diet for his newly created children. When you follow this diet, you will reap healthy benefits. Science has proven it over and over. After the fall, God introduced another component to their diet. Genesis 3.18 says, And you will eat the plants of the field. We can call vegetables post-fall food, and God wants us to include it in our diet. When did God give mankind permission to slaughter and eat animals? And what was his reason for doing it? The flood virtually destroyed all vegetation and God allowed man to eat flesh of animals. But on one condition. Unfortunately, the world has forgotten about this condition. Genesis 9 verse 3 Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. Verses 4 and 5 But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting from every animal. Are people obeying this command? No. Why not? Well, they say it's Old Testament stuff. Somehow they believe that there are no health risks in New Testament times. Are they reaping the consequences? Yes. Blood is the carrier of diseases. And because God loves us and wants to protect us, he warns us and says, no blood. At the first council of the early church, a very important announcement was made. Acts 15, 28. It seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. Verse 29, you are to abstain from blood, from meat of strangled animals. You will do well to avoid these things. Next time when you buy meat, remember what God said in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament, no blood. And remember what the Holy Spirit said in the New Testament, no blood. If you still want to continue eating meat after this lecture, go for kosher meat. Because God cares for us, he warned us about another very dangerous substance, Leviticus 3.17. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Wherever you live, you must not eat fat or any blood. More than 3,000 years before medical science discovered the deadly effects of animal fats on the human system, the Bible knew about it. Do not transgress the commandment which says, Thou shalt not kill, because you are killing yourself when you partake of animal fats. You are looking at an almost clogged artery and one that is completely clogged. Why? This person ignored the health laws which prohibits the eating of animal fat and blood. Fatty substances are deposited in the walls of the arteries and eventually people die from a coronary heart attack. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. 
So if I sow a lot of animal fat in my arteries, I reap high blood pressure, cholesterol and a coronary heart attack. There are of course other contributory factors as well. Besides forbidding the eating of blood and fat, there are also other restrictions. This concerns the type of animals we are allowed to eat. Deuteronomy chapter 14, 6 You may eat any animal that has a split hoof, divided in two, and that chews the cud. What are we calling these plant-eating animals? Herbivorous. Verse 7 However, of these that chew the cud, or that have a split hoof completely divided, you may not eat the camel, the rabbit, or the coney. Although they chew the cud, they do not have a split hoof. They are unclean for you. Why not? Recent studies reveal that the toxic levels of these unclean animals are so dangerously high that it's taboo. Take for instance the camel. In order to conserve all its fluids on a journey through the desert, it absorbs all urine in its blood and body tissue. And guess what happens? Its toxic levels become dangerously high. Verse 8. The pig is also unclean. You are not to eat their meat or touch their carcasses. We also have guidelines concerning clean and unclean fish. Verse 10. But anything that does not have fins and scales you may not eat. For you it is unclean. Reason? High toxic levels. The finless fishes are the scavengers of the sea or the rivers. And then God, the great designer of living creatures, says the following about birds, verses 11 and 12. You may eat any clean bird, but these you may not eat, the eagle, the vulture. And then follows a long list of all the unclean birds. And when you study their eating habits, you discover that they are all scavengers. They are carnivorous. Deuteronomy 14.2 says something very important as to why we should refrain from eating these unclean creatures. It says, For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Out of all the peoples on the face of the earth, the Lord has chosen you to be his treasured possession. What a tremendous statement. What I put in my body not only affects me physically, but also spiritually. God is calling us to a life of holy living in these last days just before the second coming of Christ. Let us seriously listen to what he has to say concerning his health laws. Because we are so very special to him, he says to us in verse 3, Do not eat any detestable thing. But in spite of all these clear directions on clean and unclean meat, there are still people who try to justify eating these detestable things. And the verse they quote comes from Acts chapter 10 verse 13 where it says, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. And this is where they stop. Tell me, will God prohibit people living before the cross to eat toxic food and then permit people after the cross to destroy themselves with these dangerous carcasses? Of course not. Peter explains the meaning of the vision in verse 28. But God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. Let's ask modern science to tell us about the dangers of eating pork. They've discovered that there is a direct relationship between pork eating and coronary heart disease, cancer and certain communicable diseases. Pigs are noteworthy as hosts for the intestinal trichina roundworm, trichinella spirulis, which causes the disease trichinosis, a disease which doctors often attribute to intestinal flu, pneumonia or rheumatism. Hundreds of thousands of new cases of trichinosis are reported annually. Brown and Neva's book, Basic Clinical Parasitology, page 108, says there is not a single known case in this disease among vegetarians. Romans 12 verse 1 Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship.
Another serious disease is called toxoplasmosis. It is caused by a one-celled organism called Toxoplasma gondii, which is found in pigs as well as other animals. Many carcasses are contaminated with cysts and when you eat it, you become infected. Clinical symptoms include headaches, inflammation of the heart muscle, muscle aches and pneumonia. Doctors say that drug therapy is difficult and death may be the result. According to a recent report, one in three pigs and one in ten lambs may be infected with a parasite. Eating meat in our day has become a health hazard. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. According to Braunwald, salmonella contaminates 50% of raw meat purchased today. Pork contributes not only to the spread of communicable diseases, but also to the development of the chronic diseases such as coronary heart diseases, strokes and cancer. A publication called Diet, Nutrition and Cancer, pages 383 and 408 says, Mortality from breast cancer rises as a woman's consumption of pork and total fats increases. There are drainage pipes on the pork's front paws. This is for its own pus to escape. When you block these drainage pipes, the pig dies in its own poison. Do you need more scientific proof to put you off pork eating for life? If you would gradually switch over to a vegetarian diet, you will enjoy tremendous health blessings. This was God's original diet for man and it is still the healthiest diet. What about tea? Now if you really want to harm yourself, get addicted to drinking tea. All its poisons are concentrated in the few top leaves. Why? What is the reason? This is to protect the plant from insects. But we human beings have become so brilliant that we take those toxic leaves, which insects avoid, and make tea from it. And we call this health-destroying habit culture. Some ladies even lift their little finger in this suicidal practice. Careful scientific research revealed that tea drinking causes brain injury and mental degeneration. It has a disastrous health-destroying effect on the fine machinery of the brain. Further research on the harmful effects of tea drinking says it also injures the digestive organs, causes dizziness, heart palpitations and headaches. It has a weakening effect on the nervous system. And of course, coffee is ten times worse because it permanently lessens brain activity and causes impatience and irritability. It ruins your physical powers and damages your stomach. Romans 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And may I also appeal to you in the light of Scripture to eliminate these dangerous substances from your diet. Decide to start a new life, a clean life, a holy life, a life of total commitment. What's happening here? Does the donkey cart need a new set of rings? Tell me, has our friend got a problem? Yes, a smoker has a very serious addiction problem. It may look very harmless and even smell good, but what does it do to your body? Cigarette smoking is currently the greatest single killer of mankind, and the addiction to it is greater than the addiction to Dacha. Every time a smoker inhales, the dangerous tars and other carcinogenic chemicals are deposited in his lung cells. Galatians 6 verse 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. If you sow those dangerous toxic tobacco tars into your lungs, you will reap a very unpleasant harvest. Cigarette smoking is like a loaded pistol and time pulls the trigger. Is it easy to quit? Well, Mark Twain says he has done it a thousand times.
I took this slide of a cigarette ad in London. They're advertising player cigarettes. But it is a law to print the following notice with every ad. It says, HM Government Health Department's warning, cigarettes can seriously damage your health. Only God can help our friend to throw away his pipe. He hasn't got the willpower to quit. And only God can help you to quit. He is very interested in helping you gain the victory over this deadly habit. South Africans love outdoor activities. And what do they usually take along on these outings? Well, it's beer, charcoal, bourrevos or chops. And why are South Africans world leaders in cardiac and cancer mortalities? Did you know that one piece of bryflace has the same amount of the dangerous cancer-producing substance called benzopyrene as 600 cigarettes have. Of all the cancer-producing chemicals, benzopyrene is the most potent, the most dangerous. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. God wants to be glorified by a new healthy lifestyle. Let's do what he asks from us and reap the good benefits. God is not a spoiled sport. He does not want to take away all your pleasures in life. He wants to substitute the harmful with something far more satisfying. If our senses are impaired, we only enjoy half our potential. The God who designed our marvelous bodies and our wonderful world knows what is best for us. Let's follow his advice. From Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, we find this excellent advice on a healthy lifestyle. It says, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself. Is it really possible to defile oneself by placing certain substances in one's body? Oh yes. Let's look at the defiling and harmful effects of alcohol. Proverbs 20 verse 1 Wine is a mocker and beer is a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. There is absolutely no liberty in drinking alcohol as this ad says. Only bondage. We've all seen the destructive effects and trauma of alcoholism in the lives of family or friends. Proverbs 23 verses 29 to 32 Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it's red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly, in the end it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. This ad says, get your liquor quicker. No, says Proverbs 23 verse 35. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind imagine confusing things. Verse 35. They hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When will I wake up so I can find another drink? Proverbs 31 verses 3 and 4. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what the law decrees and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Ephesians 5.18 Do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. What sound advice! There are more people in mental institutions because of alcohol addiction than any other cause. Research done by the famous Mayo Clinic says that three out of every ten people who take a first drink eventually become alcoholics. Now one of that Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 3 that no church officer should use wine. I got this bottle of wine in the Sonoma Valley Inn in California. Just look at this warning. With every glass of wine a person drinks, he destroys a large amount of brain cells. An expecting mother can cause damage to the fetus by only one glass of wine.
God wants us to enjoy the wonderful flame of health to the full. So whatever he asks us to do, he will also supply the power to do it. All his biddings are enablings. And God's way is always the best way. Let me read you a beautiful promise. Philippians 4 verse 13 I can do everything through him who gives me the strength. But unfortunately, we don't always like to deny ourselves. We would much rather gratify our sinful appetites. The best place to gain the victory over any sinful desire is at the foot of the cross where Jesus gave up his life for us. Listen to what Paul said. Galatians 2 verse 20 I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I read an excellent definition on temperance that I would like to share with you. It says, True temperance teaches us to dispense entirely with everything hurtful and to use judiciously that which is healthful. It comes from the book Patriarchs and Prophets, page 562. In other words, no poisonous tea, no poisonous coffee, and no poisonous alcohol. And when I substitute them with something harmless and healthy, I must use it in moderation. Proverbs 23 verse 2 says, I must put a knife to my throat. In other words, self-control. It's a very good habit to pray before every meal, not only to ask God's blessing upon the food, but also to ask Him to give us self-control. Let me reiterate what I've said before. Temperance means that I will leave out of my diet those things that are harmful. And when I sit down at table to partake of healthy foods, I will eat moderately and with self-control. I will deny my appetite and glorify God in my body. I will keep the cross of Christ ever before me. I want to challenge you to adopt a new lifestyle. There is much more joy in saying no to your fallen appetite than to gratify that appetite. First of all, make sure that you have peace in your heart, the peace of God. Leave your heavy burdens at the foot of the cross and receive God's pardon and his righteousness. And once you've taken care of your spiritual life, start caring for your physical health. Live a balanced life. Have regular hours for sleep, for work and for eating your meals. And please don't eat in between meals. Practice self-control. Make use of fruits, nuts, grains and vegetables. But please don't mix your fruit and vegetables. And go for natural foods instead of processed foods. Cultivate habits of physical activities. Try to exercise daily. Brisk walking is one of the best forms of exercise. Come into contact with nature more often. When one beholds God's handiwork, it encourages one to praise Him. And this is also health-promoting. Think more often of His goodness and of the pleasant things of life. Fresh air and water are some of life's greatest blessings. The best tranquilizer is a shower or a bath. Have water not later than 30 minutes before your meal and wait another two hours after meals to flush your system. Besides plenty of water, external and internal, you also need some sunshine. Allow God's healing sun to shine on your body and thank Him for His rays of mercy. Someone said that health should be as sacredly guarded as character. So please regard your health as a sacred gift from the Creator to you personally. It's very precious. Cherish it dearly. Paul makes an appeal to each of us in the light of the cross of Calvary. I've quoted it before, but I need to quote it again. Romans 12 verse 1 Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. In our own strength, we will never be able to change a wrong lifestyle. 
But when we allow Jesus to help us, we will be more than conquerors. Galatians 2 verse 20 I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My prayer is that this health wheel will start operating in your life. Proper diet, water, pure air, sunlight, rest, exercise, self-control and trust in God. Thank you, Francois. I trust you found this lecture as interesting as all the others. May God help us to make wise decisions regarding our health. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our prayer is that you will help us to take care of our bodies so that we will live in your honor and glorify your name. Amen.